Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about low bit converters. Whoops. Hope that didn't. I hit the table. I got too excited here. So, low bit converters. What is the deal with those things, man? What is a low bit converter? So, there are two types of, well, there are many types of low bit converters, and there's a whole for format called DSD, uh, which stands for. Delta Sigma something I believe I don't even remember right now But as you can see I don't think it's that important, but what is a little bit converter? Well, let's start off by recording a simple sine wave digitally to start off with because I just need a really simple example To do this with so we'll do this and We're gonna hit record on input. And we're just gonna go to default and And that's good so if we come in here, we have our sine wave. Do, 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 do. There are two types of low bit converters and they require extraordinarily high sample rates like two point something megahertz or 11 megahertz. And they've formulated a way to make this demand less demanding. And it is this method is what is used because there's a number of issues that I didn't really talk about, but there are, trust me, there are problems with converters with the old way we did converters. There are our ladders and flash converters are the ones that I studied specifically, but we right now we use Delta Sigma modulation, multi-bit converters that spit out unary code and all this other jazz. But I just want to tell you what Delta Sigma modulation, and this is not like a math video. I just want to tell you what Delta Sigma is, well, Sigma modulation, no, Delta modulation. I don't remember. There's one and then there's Delta Sigma modulation, which is the one we use now. And we use a multi-bit version of it. And so what's going on? Well, I'm glad you asked. A low bit converter will say we will use one bit. Why are we going to use one bit? Why? Because we want 16 bits, right? Well, we're going to get to 16 bits later, but we can accomplish this with one bit. Why do we even come to this conclusion that we need one bit? Well, there's all these issues with our other with our other converters and the issue is the multiple bits part. It creates non-linearity, which is the main problem because the resistors and all the analog components, they just have all these pieces. It's hard for them to be discrete and tell things where they're at. It's just difficult. And so we said, well, if we do one bit, there's only on and off. And even an analog thing can do that. It could tell me if something's on or off. And so that was the idea. Let's let's use just one bit to express our entire dynamic range. And you might be thinking, how is that even possible? Especially with your previous understanding of bit bit depth, which is everyone's understanding. It's just a horrible mess. And so what they used is they used modulation, delta modulation. That's what it is. I'm pretty sure it's just delta modulation. Delta modulation looks at a waveform. And I'm going to talk about this in very layman's terms. Like, you'll get this. So what it does is we have one bit. And we're going to sample our signal at this stupidly fast rate. Like, there's a this huge rate. And that will allow us to use just one bit. And how does it do it? Well, it'll do it like this. Let's say that this is the beginning of our signal. It'll say, did our waveform move up or down? It'll take our quantization value. So whatever it quantized to our amplitude and it'll say do we go up or down and if it went up it'll put out a one if it uh did not then it'll put out a zero so it'll move up a little bit and it'll do this and it'll say oh i moved up a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more a little more and then we say oh we peaked out so now we need to go down 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 and it'll it'll do this over and over and over and over and because we've sampled it at such a fast rate that this is the case where more samples does sort of make that finer image picture but there is a limit to how this works too essentially your frequency response that is necessary for this kind of modulation has just become outrageously high um but so and in a sense it still doesn't improve the quality it's like the diminishing returns again the 4k to 8k tvs it's like that so it'll say oh do we move up move up it'll put out ones and put out downs when things are going down and now that's really great but there's a better way because that way requires a really high sample rate like su super high so that wasn't possible but they theorized about this and they said gee i think we're really on to something i think we ought to pursue this idea more and they came up with delta sigma modulation now what now that sounds pretty scary delta sigma modulation is nothing more than taking one value so we take our first sample and then we take our second sample we subtract, we subtract them, so the difference, and then we use that difference to tell us if it's a 1 or a 0. And you might be saying, how is that any better? Well, it allows us to 
not look at the because the other one looks at a lot of samples this allows us to sort of have a rolling thing so we don't need to necessarily do that we still need a really fast rate but the the requirements for it are much simpler and so it will look at the differences and this will actually output a type of pulse so we'll get a pulse going on here for ones and zeros because now it's modulating up and down uh, much quicker so it'll say do we increase here what was the difference between these two points and if the difference was below a certain value it'll output a zero and above a certain value it'll output a one and this is called delta sigma modulation now if you i just want you to get the general idea of what that is you don't need to like completely get it you just need to understand that it can if you sample it at a fast enough rate the differences in these modulations are so tiny that you can represent your entire signal like this with one bit and in fact that's how all your converters work now your converters work on another principle called multi it's a multi-bit low bit converter so it'll use what they did was they'll assign separate converters for a range from like here to here and then another one from here to here and another one from here to here and so it, it lessens the the needs on the system now this isn't 100 percent accurate the way i'm saying it but i have a feeling that this will probably just i just want you to be aware that this is a thing because it's horribly not understood that this is a thing so it'll do that and that's what your converter right now if you own one is probably doing it's using this system when it outputs the code, it'll output something called unary code, and this allows it to randomize the values, and it will help you with your noise floor, and it will help you with well, it helps with the noise floor because it when it gets randomized, it decorrelates the quantization error from the signal. Now, I'm gonna leave it right there and just stop there. That's pretty much what you need to know, and just as a thing, and it becomes important when we talk about noise floor and correlated correlated noise versus uncorrelated, and our We've already talked about dynamic range, so that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe. If I got anything wrong, because I may have said something wrong here. I'm not like an expert on the subject. I'm just trying to share what I know. If I got something wrong, let me know. I'll gladly redo the video and make it better. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing loves. Reversing.